So I stopped doing well in school because at that point in my life, it wasn't about school at all. What's up YouTube, it's Josh Reese, and today we're going to be talking about what I call the academic validation train. Now this academic validation train is a phenomenon that I see especially in the medical world. And that is that these kids who grow up have the thing in their mind that they want to be the best that they can be. And they fulfill this by becoming validated academically. So these are the kids who from young age or old age, they get driven by how well they do in school. Now, this could come from validation from their parents or validation from their teachers, but they just want to be the best they can be. And they find that through school and they end up as doctors and lawyers and just the, the what in their mind is the best they could be. If I get A's, where what kind of schools can I get into? They also end up in academia, in PhDs. And these people are on the academic validation train and they ride it till their last stop. Now, what I'm going to talk about in this video is getting off the academic validation train before it takes you to a place where you don't want to be. Now, this is no offense to some, I know, doctors and lawyers out there who actually want to do what they're doing. But I know far too many people who are disappointed if they don't end up as MDs or you know the highest that they can be and i also know people who end up there and realize that they're not so not that they're not supposed to be there but that they're not getting their life fulfillment out of being there anymore because they're not academically validated people usually end up in medical school because it's the highest they can think of and so they do well in medical school they get into the hardest residencies they start writing papers and just being the best that they can be and so what I want you to do and what I've done lately is take a moment and think, what do you want to do with your life before the academic validation train takes you somewhere where you don't want to go? As you can guess, and as I'm probably sure many of you who end up on an optometry channel like this one probably have been in the academic train at least for some time. I was a horrible student as a kid. My teacher would complain to my parents about me. I'd get sent home by the principal sometimes. Like, I wasn't a very good kid. Somewhere along, I think it was fifth grade, there was an advanced program that all the smart kids were doing. And I thought, hey, I want to be like them. And so I, you know, I don't, I actually don't think I got in because I passed the test. I actually think I just talked my way and convinced them to let me into the, you know, the, this is the academically gifted class in school. But somehow I ended up there and then that kind of became my personality. Really what I wanted to do is I wanted to be valedictorian. I wanted to get 4.0. And I remember I got an A- minus in high school, which um, ended up being like, oh my gosh, no, I'm not going to be valedictorian. I was still salutatorian. It was still fine. But this took me all the way until my freshman year of college. And now in my freshman year of college, I was still, you know, academic, academic. I got a 4.0. And then somewhere along the line, I realized I was spending all my time thinking and, and caring about school. And when you get into college, you realize that you have a lot more time than you thought because you're not living at your parents' house. You can just, or maybe you are, some people, but you have a lot more time on your hands and a lot more things that you can do. Now you can, you know, spiral and, you know, go out of control. But uh, I was still pretty heavy in the academic validation train, but I still, you know, I wanted a part-time job. I got a job as a janitor. Uh, I wanted to make some money because I'd never had a job up to that point because everything was school. And so I was a janitor. And at this part in my life, I um, started dating. This is around the time I met my future wife. And so I really stopped doing well in school for, for a second. I took a little bit time off. I got um, a few C's. Good, Hopefully, well, one of them was curved to a B minus. Sweet. But um, I was like, oh my gosh, this isn't me ah, you know, like I'm the, I'm the kid who gets A's in school. So I felt a little bit guilt there, but it was also because I was doing things that were more important than school. Finding the right person to be with for the rest of your life, that is more important than school, in my opinion. And so I, looking back, I think I was doing it right, but I did make some, you know, changes in that moment when I got serious about wanting to be an optometrist. And so that's also the moment in my life when I started dedicating uh, my vision to being an optometrist and I started doing well in school again and then this hit a point where 
I, you know, I had these part-time jobs still. I was a vision therapist uh, working for an optometrist, um, had like all the extracurriculars and stuff, you know, just trying to be the best. And um, I got into optometry school and then I realized why college? Parasitology class that I was taking, it didn't matter if I did well in it because I was going to optometry school anyway. And that stuff, you know, matters a little bit, but not, not a ton. And so I, I got a few C's that, you know, last semester of college and I felt guilty about it because in my mind, I was still the academic, you know, validation train captain, you know, um, cause I wanted to be the best that I could be. I started optometry school. I was going to do the best that I could to be the best optometrist I was going to be. And that lasted for a little bit in my first year, uh, getting A's still, you know, just trying to put my time into it. But eventually I got part-time job again and I um, started doing, you know, making leaps and bounds on YouTube and TikTok and all these um, projects I've been working on now with social media. And I haven't been doing well in school lately. And it took me a moment to uh, stop feeling guilty because right now I'm at a point in my life where maybe you guys have been there or are there right now and you're feeling guilty about not getting an A because you know you're capable. You know that if you spent the time that you should, you'd get an A because you, you'll you know that. You'll know that information enough to, to show that you know, you're capable. And believe you me, being capable in school does not translate to the real world as much as you think it is. Sure, you want to have all your doors open. You want to be able to get into the you know, college, grad school, residency that you want to get into. And I still want to get good enough grades to keep these residency doors open. But what's more important to me now is doing what I want to do. And so I have two little themes that I want to talk about right now. One is that one truth you want to have with you to be you know, a good person, be the person you want to be, is put in 100% effort. Now, if you are putting 100% effort into school, you will get A's. You know, most of the time, or you'll be at least good, good academic standing. You won't be in trouble. And you want to have freedom to do what you want to do. And in my mind, in my definition, freedom is the ability to say no. It's not the ability to say yes, it's the ability to say no to everything else except for what you want to do. And so, with those two truths being true, um, I find myself in the middle of both of them right now where I want to do what I want to do. I want to be free, but I also want to give 100% effort. And right now, those don't meet in school. Being the person who rides the academic validation train and gets A's in school isn't the person I want to be anymore. I want to be the guy who's helping people. Now, I'm not an optometrist yet, so I gotta wait two years. Uh, and like past school and boards and all that. But I can help people right now, and that's what I've been doing. I've been making YouTube, TikTok. I've been working on a course that pre-optometry students can take to hopefully become better applicants and get into schools, uh, help them with their application process and things like that. So if you're looking out for that course, it's coming soon. I've been working on all these things, and that's taking away from my 100% effort. So I've learned that I can't feel guilty about that because I'm still giving 100% effort. It's just that 100% isn't in school anymore. I'm putting still like 60-70% effort into school because optometry school takes a lot of effort to, you know, be a doctor, but a lot of that effort is, you know, in my family with my wife or in these courses in the social media things that I've been doing. And so, well I just want to leave you with in this video is I want you to hopefully not get too depressed about your academic validation. Don't be the kind of person that rides the academic validation train to the top of academia. Maybe if you're watching this and you're thinking of applying to med school and that optometry school is a backup because, you know, if I'm not the best I can be, if I'm not the doctor, if I'm not the lawyer, I'll just settle for something different. But I didn't become a, an optometrist because I didn't think I'd make a good, you know, MD. 
I became an optometrist because it's the life I wanted to live. We have to still be intentional about thing, the things we're doing. I think internally and sometimes externally, we judge ourselves to other people. And we think we're either lesser than them or they're better than us. And both of which are not true. You're only judged on if you are doing your 100%. And so please keep doing well in school. But just know that maybe you're at a point in your life where you're not performing and maybe some doors are shutting for you because of your academic performance. But know that you're still going to be able to help the people you want to help, just maybe not in the way you had envisioned it. So take a moment right now, think about the person you want to become, and hopefully this video will help you be inspired to go out and be that person. Start being that person now. Uh, so thank you for watching this video. I'll look out for that course if it'll help you pre-optometry students out there. And uh, we'll see you later.